many. Would all of you who have entered the room unmute and say hello? Hello, I'm Patrick Whitehead, Fernley High School in Nevada. Awesome. Who else? Hi there, Mariano Olivas from uh, Legacy High School up north, Las Vegas. Okay. So, uh, Patrick and Corey, you're not here. You're just, oh, hi. So you need to unmute yourself, Patrick. Say hi. Yeah, I already did. My video was just off. So okay, no I, I'm from Fernley High School. From uh, and that's where? That's Northern Nevada, just uh, east of Reno, about 35 miles. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. And so, welcome to a very well attended session on teaching economics. Do. Uh, by raise of hand or by saying something or, by the way, do you like my background? I'm certainly not re reporting from uh, Hawaii, but I'm wearing the right shirt and I got the right background. <laughs> so by raise of hands or saying hi or whatever, uh, are you teaching econ now or have you taught econ or are you looking to teach econ? Which? I, I currently teach uh, econ. I, I've been teaching uh, about 11 years. This is my 19th year of teaching, but 11 years of econ. Oh, sweet. Okay. Anyone else? It comes up second semester for for this school year, but I've done it the last two years. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, it's always great to do this session with people who are teaching econ because anything that I talk about that you have something to add, you experienced teachers, add them, please do. So I'm not gonna talk a little much about myself other than to say I'm um, a retired econ instructor at a community college, and I'm not gonna tell you how many years, but it's been over 40. And so I was 12 when I started. <laughs> that was my joke, sorry. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, let's see. Please note the, the link that I put into the uh, chat. Um, as an economist, I know that incentives matter. And I want to capture your contact information. So I'm going to have a drawing for a $50 gift card if you fill out the form. And of course, you'll be giving me your email address so I will be able to send you the link to all of the information that I'm going to be sharing. So there we go. All right, so this is a list of the resources. I will be sending you the PowerPoint so that these are hot links so you'll just be able to, to link on them. But I'll be talking about all of these links today. Um, for those of you who have taught econ, are any of these links familiar? Yes, all of them. <laughs> all of these? OK. Yes. So when I start talking about them, um, Chime in, tell me whether you find them as useful as I have or not, okay? Excellent. All right, so first link, first concept is the Council for Economic Education. This is what I like to call the grand daddy, grand mommy, grand whatever of the, of the um, links for teachers of economics. I would highly recommend that you get on their listserv so that you find out about activities that are being that are happening within your area as well as nationally there's a conference coming up in um fort lauderdale and they switch them you know they go from different parts of the country to different parts of the country and so you may have the opportunity to attend one of their conferences they're really great conferences so just be aware of it it's a useful one for you. What they have is something called EconEdLink. And 
death by PowerPoint. Remember death by PowerPoint. I'm not going to read what's on the slide, but I have just found that Econ Ed Link is really great. It has lots and lots of lessons, and they used to have a flash drive, and I don't know if you can see it. This is it. There it is. There's the flash drive, which you can't see. And it doesn't work anymore because everything's gone virtual. So um, sign up for Econ Ed Link, and you can search it. I think I have that described for you. Let me just... You could, you know, it has quizzes, it has lessons, it has activities, and there's lots and lots of stuff there. You can search for it by, um, you can search by uh, topics, you can search by grade levels. Um, they have featured activities that you could go for. So I would highly recommend it. It's, it's a really good set kind of thing for you. So it, here's what it allows you to search by. And so this is a hot link. So I'm going to take you there. So tell me, can you see this? Or do I need a new share? You did it. You secured a spot on Main Street. Now all that's left is everything. <laughs> Can you see my video? Econ Ed Link is a no, web. It's only showing the PowerPoint. Provides we can hear it, we just can't see it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a new share. For teachers and students to develop a better understanding of economics and personal finance. I use a lot of uh, Econ Ed Link. God. Um, I'm going to warn you all, I've been in education for so long that I'm a techno immigrant and I'm undocumented. So please forgive me if things break down on me. I just, <laughs> I'm trying to get it to share. <laughs> Why isn't it doing it? Oh, click on the word share, dopey. <laughs> All right, there we go. With, uh, lesson plan ideas and activities or resources that I can I can use when introducing a topic. The popular resources on Econ Ed Link are the lessons because those lessons are written by educators. They're good, solid. By the way, this is an older video. Based lesson that we provide both of the. I mean, look at the dates. You can find a lot of websites <laughs> that have lessons online, and basically what they do is take a printed document. This is a great lesson. They put it into a PDF file, and they put it up online. That's not what we do. We do online lessons because we feel that the content is there, and what our lessons do is guide the students through the understanding of that content and how it relates to economics. So we want the students to interact. We want the students to read material from other websites that we provide. We create um, activities for them to do online so that they answer questions and um, they're becoming engaged with that technology and engaged with the computer. We have an economic personal finance group that's there that you can actually join and begin to share. Uh, by the way, the, the gentleman you're looking at is the one that invented the term techno-immigrant for our students who are techno-natives. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. That's enough, right? You've seen enough. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that's Econ Ed Link, and I highly recommend that you um, you use it. Um, Federal Reserve Education is really awesome. And they're doing things all the time, really um, doing new things all the time. So uh, they've got lessons for all grade levels. They have interactive tools. Every one of the Federal Reserve banks has some level of education, some more than others. And what they've agreed to do is they put them all in one place. And so this is that one place.
And so as you can see, you can search for resources. So, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> Give me something, please. <laughs> Inflation. All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. I shouldn't be working on a Saturday. <laughs> so it, it's see. all right. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, there you got it. So you can see all these wonderful things that they have from the different Federal Reserve banks. By the way, certain banks are more than others, as I've said. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis is the renowned one for um, uh, economic literacy. Uh, by the way, if um, you teach AP or thinking about teaching AP, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis does an annual AP Economics Teachers Conference where they update teachers on teaching AP economics and so on. So I would highly recommend um, those folks. So back to this. Now, these are uh, resources that are what I have found to be useful. Have any of you used Marginal Revolution University or MRU.org? I've used it for myself uh, just to get some background knowledge on areas that I wasn't quite sure or to get different perspectives, but I've never, I've never thrown my students right into it. I'm going to highly recommend this. Uh, we did a, a live workshop in, in San Diego um, in June with a presenter from MRU, and um, he really kind of delved deep into what MRU can provide. So I would highly recommend you go to the MRU website. I'm not going to click on the MRU website. I'm going to take you, oops, I just did, but I didn't mean to. I'm going to encourage you to take a look at Econ Inbox, and that's where I'm going to take you now. We know teaching economics is really busy. Making the time to integrate resources for your classroom can be a challenge. So hopefully you can hear this. For the internet for you. There is someone, or rather, something, Econ Inbox. Simply send us your weekly schedule and we'll help you out. We see what you're teaching and when you're teaching. And the week before you teach it, we curate and deliver timely news articles, activities, videos, podcasts, and more straight to your inbox. And the best part? Econ Inbox is 100% free. Yeah, you heard right. So what are you waiting for? Send us your schedule today and get ready to wow your students. Every week, a trusted, timely, and engaging e-bonnet. Uh, by the way, um, did any of you who listened to that identify an error in that presentation? I will. I know that's a trick question, but remember, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Nothing in economics is free. It should have said at no charge. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to highlight what Econ in Inbox does for you. If you send them your syllabus, you will receive resources weekly that are linked to that syllabus so that the resources could be videos, the resources could be articles. When I was teaching, they didn't have this, but I would have loved to have had it because it's a, it's a really great way to be able to uh, incorporate bell ringers into what you're doing, something 
perfectly linked to what you're doing. Another group that I have found to be very useful is something called the Foundation for Economic Education. Have any of you used their resources? So I've used their resources, and I uh, just this summer went to one of my first trainings down in Vegas, um, and it was uh, it was great. I, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, yes, and and by the way, the the director of training lives in Las Vegas, and that's why it was in Las Vegas, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to meet uh, the the famous high school teacher, Mr. Clifford. Oh uh, yeah, well. and so yeah. it was a it was a two dayer uh, down there um, on how he does economics. I've been following him on on uh, YouTube, and so it, it was it was kind of a nerdy uh, teacher crush. I, I finally got to meet him. So it it. it it's a really good, uh, th their trainings are phenomenal if that's how they all are. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be hitting the live trainings a lot more. Well, I'm glad you, I, you know, I'm very happy to hear your um, uh, um, testimonial. Let me just tell you that they do two things. And, you know, I'm again, no reading. You can read this. But I want to emphasize they do two things for you. They do webinar programs which you can attend, right? Or live, like um, we did a live one with them two years ago in San Diego, but they're, um, you know, everybody's thinking that virtual is, is just a better way to go uh, than having it in person because um, in person, you can only get maybe 30 or 40 people. When you do it virtually, you can get way more people. But the other thing they do, which is kind of interesting, is that they have a group of professors who will address your classes. And so if you have a topic that matches what they have in their list, and you can give them a, a, a significant number of attendees, they will set up a lecture by that, that economist for your class. So I think the the limit, it, I mean, the minimum is something like 40 or 50. But that's something to be thinking about, too. If you're interested in having your students um, listen to a professional economist. And so let's go to their website. Oh, there we go. So here's their website and it just has a list. And so here's, here you can see some of their programs and webinars that are available. So um, I would highly recommend you take a look at this. I have found what they do is, is really quite um, uh, useful. I will tell you though, that they are free market types. So, if you have a bias against free market, you may want to use their materials as a way for your students to see free market and have you contrast your view with their views. Of course, you're going, to, you're going to want to go to our website. And um, so we we have, um, we announce all the kinds of things that we do. Uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that we have an advisory board and our advisory board meets virtually. And if you're interested in helping us determine what we should be offering, you're encouraged to become a member of our advisory board. We're always looking for teachers to be on our advisory board. We meet on the first Tuesday of every month during the school year at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is, is, I think, the same as Nevada time. And so if, if you'd like, um, uh, visit our advisory board. It's just stcee.org and um, sign up to get information from us.
Okay, now I'm uh, going to show you the files that I'm going to be sharing with you. Over the, over the years, I have accumulated videos that I've used to introduce topics. And so I'm going to show you a few of these videos um, before we leave. But you'll have access to all of these videos. I also have for you a list of all the kinds of videos that um, are available. For some reason, some economists love to watch television shows and then discover the economics in each of those. So as you can see, there's Big Bang Theory, Shark Tank, Seinfeld, and so on and so on. And so again, uh, if you fill out that form, which I'm going to put into the chat again, um, I will send you all of these links. I'm assuming you can see these links, right? Or no? Yes, we can see them. Okay, good. I'm just checking. All right, good. Okay. Let me get to my PowerPoint. And so I'm going to show you a couple of videos at the end that are kind of fun. This video I always showed on the first day of class. In 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not with physical products. It's Amazon's other company, Audible. Audible pays me. In 1930, a Republican controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the. Anyone? Anyone? The. Anyone? Anyone? The tariff bill, the Holly Smooth Tariff Act, which. Anyone? How many of you have seen this? I, I'm literally using a picture of that in my, I have a presentation at three. I'm, I'm using that picture of him, anybody. So <laughs> I, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> so let me tell you how I use it. Um, in the, in the day, in during, <laughs> uh, thank you, Shauna, for mentioning that. During the, um, the days when we did face-to-face -face in person, um, I always wanted to encourage my students to talk. And, you know, it's kind of funny that um, this is a perfect example of the wrong way to do it. And that's why I always showed this video. I, I would show the video and then I would say to my students, what is this? I would do a bunch of things, by the way, with this. Number one is, who is this person who is the, the lecturer? Do we know? Bill, Bill Stein. Ben Stein, right? Ben Stein, excuse me. Yes, Ben Stein. So hooray for cell phones, hooray for laptops, hooray for um, tablets. I tell my students, look up Ben Stein. And they'll discover that Ben Stein is a Harvard graduate with a degree in economics. And they'll discover that his father, Herbert Stein, was a member of the Economic Council of the Council of Economic Advisors for President Nixon. So it was a really great way for us to start a little kind of discussion because I would always tell my students, 
look this up. I would never, whenever I would introduce a topic, I would say to my students, look up the topic and tell me what you're going, what I'm going to tell you about it. And so I would do this with Ben Stein. Then what is the technique that he is trying to do here? Let's, let me show some more. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. That time, the, the technique, which by the way, none of you have answered. <laughs> and I would tell my students, I will stare at the ceiling or I'll stare at the floor until one of you have answered. Um, by the way, what I discovered when COVID hit, I was, I was still teaching when COVID hit and we went virtual and I, I discovered that students are more likely to type into chat than they were to talk aloud during class. I don't know why, but they did. But I would tell my students, yeah, I see Shauna agrees. Um, what I discovered was that my students were just, uh, so you know, <laughs> so my students discovered that all of our students now have been conditioned to kind of tune out to the sage on the stage. They, they are just too conditioned by popular, you know, they're used to having their phones, they're used to watching videos of one sort or another. When I was a young person and I watched TV, a uh, commercial was only, would take 60 seconds. No commercial is 60 seconds anymore because the attention span is too short. The commercials are now about 20 seconds. When we watched a television program that was live, they would just have one camera showing whatever it was. Now, when you see something live, you'd have multiple cameras and you would not see anything for more than 10 or 15 seconds. And they'd shoot from camera to camera to camera to camera. Our students are all conditioned for that now, which meant that I needed to come up with a new technique, which is Ben Stein's technique, but he's not using it correctly. That's the Socratic method. The Socratic method is, for those of you, by the way, I would have my students look that up. What is the Socratic method? So anyone, what is the Socratic method? Anyone, anyone? Anyone? I'm gonna stare at the, <laughs> go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, uh, so so getting, uh, getting someone to understand the the uh, the reasoning or the rationality by just simply asking questions. So there you, you go into the learning through question. And what does that do when you get students to answer your questions? Well, you 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 scaffold the questions at a either a broad and then you narrow it down so they uh, not only can come to the understanding themselves, but they're also understanding how you break down uh, a, a question or a rational decision into its pieces. So it's uh, it's chunking, uh, if we want to talk about it in, in terms of how the brain functions. Excellent. And what do you as a teacher have to do in order for it to work? Well, it, it's, it's, it, it's narrowed in on scaffolding. So I need yeah, to... But even I before you know how to get them scaffold at each part before I ask the next question. Ah, but even before that, you have to do something Ben Stein didn't do, which is you have to wait till the answer. Uh, one of the, what I discovered a long, long time ago in, in, in teaching demos or whatever, is that we as teachers hate silence. And I, I remember I had a professor who, because we didn't answer the question, he would say, okay, so we got some feedback. We have to be patient to let them answer. And that's why, what I, because I showed this video at the very beginning, what I would always do from then on is when I asked a question, I would say to my students, I'm gonna stare at the ceiling, I'll stare at the floor, Anyone, anyone remember the video? And that helped just encourage questions. So I would highly re 
encourage you to use this video. This is a really cool one. It's really old. I don't know whether our students have even seen it. I know we have because we're older, but I would highly would encourage you to all use it. Uh, let me go to the other one. I really love this video. I'm uncomfortable in nice hotels. I gotta be honest. I don't want people to think I'm white trash because I'm like a step above that. I'm like white. I'm assuming you can see this video. <laughs> I like that, Shauna. Good. Good for you. Okay. Good for you. Clutter. Yeah. I mean, I'll go to a fancy restaurant once in a while, but I can't get the entree I want without looking into that price call. And don't look at me like I'm only cheap bastard, because a lot of you do it, you don't even realize it. Right? You're going down the menu, you're like, wow, this looks delicious. <laughs> Not for that. Here we go. Let's get down the right section. I use this video again, uh, probably within the first week of class, because during the first week of class, we're talking about um, the economic way of thinking. I, I'm assuming all of you do that, right? Do you, you talk about the economic way of thinking? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So uh, this one here is kind of a, an interesting way to introduce the concept of marginal benefit, marginal cost. So let me run it back again and have you kind of see if you can identify the marginal benefit, marginal cost analysis. I'm uncomfortable in nice hotels. I got to be honest. I don't want people to think I'm white trash because I'm like a step above that. I'm like white clutter. Yeah. I mean, I'll go to a fancy restaurant once in a while, but I can't get the entree I want without looking into that price call. And don't look at me like I'm only cheap bastard, because a lot of you do it, you don't even realize it. So already we see it, right? What's the marginal benefit that he's going to be describing? Anyone? Uh, is he referring to like cost benefit analysis on, you know, what's it going to cost me depending on what can I make at home or get elsewhere? That's going to make him choose. So, again, let's put it into the framework of marginal benefit, marginal cost, because in, during the first week, we need to get our students to begin thinking about decision making at the margin. So, additional. So he looks at the price column, and what does that tell him? The additional what? Benefit. The price column, additional? Cost, sorry. <laughs> and then he looks at the menu item, and what does that give him? The additional? Benefit. And so what I've discovered is I was, I was um, asked to do a session uh, the uh, other college in our district does what's called a ISM week. And I was asked to do a session on something. I can't remember what. And I asked my, I asked the, the folks who were there, um, do, do you recall from your first, first or second week, the economic way of thinking, marginal benefit, marginal cost. And they all, no, you know, it was like within their eighth week, and then I showed them this video, and immediately they, they came to the conclusion. When you're going down the menu, you're like, wow, this looks delicious. Not for that. This looks delicious. Marginal what? Anyone? This looks delicious. Marginal benefit. There you go. And then. And by the way, I would actually stop it. And so that would give me the marginal cost. I go to a nice restaurant. I don't even look at the entrees. I go right to the prices. That's how I decide what I'm in the mood for. 
the waitress c- comes up. She's like, so what are you in the mood for? I'm like, oh, actually, I'd say the um, additional topping. Braving that all week. It's delicious. Okay, that's all that the economics of it, but I always showed it to the end because it's really kind of funny and, and the students really like it. Uh, as I said, uh, if you fill out the form, and I'm going to put it in again, you fill out the form, um, you'll get all these links to my, my Google Drive so uh, you can get all the, all, all the links to these videos. I've only flown first class once in my life, and I'll tell you right now, white clutter does not belong in first class. I embarrassed myself. I finished the salad, the appetizer, they paid the plate away to bring over this dessert, the sherbet ice cream or something, right? And I'm like, I'm sorry, um, I never got my meal. She's like, oh no, that's sorbet to cleanse your palate. To what my what? So your palate, so the food tastes from you gotta be kidding me. Well, you better bring me four or five more because I'm in my 30s and I've never cleansed my palate. It's probably filthy. Okay, that pretty much brings me to the end. Um, do we have any comments, questions, anything that you'd like to share? Those of you who are teaching economics, do you have any websites that you would recommend? If so, could you put them into the chat? Uh, but I, I use a variety. It's it's really the Simpsons. And so if you just if you do Simpsons economics, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of just YouTube videos that that uh, stretch it out. And so um, I, I, I use quite a quite a few of those on on some things. And as a matter of fact, uh, I uh, I will provide you with the link to the Simpson economics. Oh, the, oh is there a specific person yeah. that does it? OK, yeah, yeah I will. Wait a minute. No. I, so what did you do? Tell me again, Patrick, you because that's so, new to me. Yeah. So if you just if you just Google Simpsons economics, like in YouTube, um, okay. it's broken down. So um, th- there's just collections of it um, that that fall into their um, NPR also features like they'll, they'll offer some things that are just that correspondence with uh, with the Simpsons. Uh, there's a reporter. His name's Kai Rizdal. Uh, he does an economics a bit for NPR every day, um, and you can go in and, and just find a variety of them. It's I, it's not one single person that uses them, uh, but but a variety that will that will pick apart and and they'll label them the actual you know economic uh, understandings um, and and principles. Yeah, I've got one more thing to share. Thank you for sharing, by the way. Thank you. Why am I? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, give me one more. Give me one minute. I promised a um, pacing guide, so I'm going to share that with you as well. Okay, so here we go. So um, th- I'm, I'm not going to take credit for this. This was uh, put together by the the direct program director at the California Council on Economic Education. But 
what he's done is he has done uh created a syllabus for a semester a semester length course in economics and what he has also done as he you know he hasn't finished this this is a work in progress but also listed uh lessons and resources that um that link to these topics and so uh, i will share this with you as well especially if you are new uh at teaching economics it might be helpful to you to um uh, know what to to cover in your uh class okay all right do we have any uh, questions, comments? We're kind of uh, finished early, but I don't think any of you are gonna be disappointed by that. Have you all uh, filled out the form? Hello. Sorry, what was the question? Have you all filled out the form? Yes, I did. Good. The rest of you, please. Thank you. Excellent. All right. At um, 2.05, I'm doing another session in the same room on um, activities that you can use if you teach a macro class. And it's based on source materials from the Reagan Library. So hopefully I'll see some or all of you at uh, 205. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So I just put in the NDE information for those who attended the session. Um, please fill out the attendance link and the survey. Thank you, well, guys. Actually, I was told that I I was not going to be getting, um, uh, Jane told me I wasn't going to be given access to their contact information. That's why I incentivized them with a $50 gift card to fill out the form. So I have their names. I have... Rose, Shauna, okay. Mariano, Catherine, Patrick, and Corey. There you go. Okay, yeah, so. the, the, it's just, uh, so Janie, like I create certificates for everybody that attends the conference. And then um, I have this whole like running list. So that's all. So anyway, this works out for me. And, you know, I can, I can afford a $50 gift card. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a good incentive. I saw that that link you put in there. Okay, so we'll see you at uh, um, at 205. What was the name of the session again? I'm sorry. Oh, this session was called So... Oh, the, the next session? No, this one that we just did. Or it's called So You May Be Teaching Economics. Great, thank you. I'm going to stay on here because I'm going to watch the next one. Patrick, yeah. are you presenting... At uh, three ten. Yeah, I'm presenting at three ten. Yeah. Oh, so Perfect. it's going to be kind of hard for you to watch this and oh, at three ten. At three ten, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So good. I'm just I'm staying on so I can pick up some stuff too as I'm as I'm finishing up and getting ready to present mine for uh, the International Economic Summit. So yeah, uh, I, I'm always looking for new stuff though. You know what's interesting? Um, uh, I'm I'm very good. I'm glad to hear you do that because you know even though I've been doing this for over forty years. I love going to conferences to learn new things. Yeah. And uh, because even at my age, I'm, you know, interested in learning new things. But um I have I'm going to be heading to a San Diego Aztec football game as soon as I'm done. So yes, uh that that would be uh, definitely I, I wish I could do the same. Um, Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm a, I'm not I'm not very optimistic because they're playing UCLA today. 
Yeah, uh, who knows what's going to happen to the pack two or whatever they're going to become now. So yeah, the pack, with, <laughs> it's going to be the pack one. Yeah, San Diego. See, I, I'm I'm originally from Oregon, so I I'm born wow. and raised Oregon fan, and watching all of this is just it's made me kind of that bad taste in my mouth on college football. It's getting rid of the regional history, and I, I'm not a big fan right now. Well, you know, I as an economist. I don't see any reason for anyone to want SDSU mm-hmm. <laughs> because they can't fill the stadium. Sure, sure. I, I'm a season ticket holder. Mm. And number one, you know, you, you teach elasticity of demand and they're they're charging way too much. Yeah. They want to fill that stadium. They're charging way too much. But aside from that, you know, I'm thank God I can afford it. Yeah. But, and it's the, and it's the concentration down there. I mean, you, I, what? How long does it take you to drive up to LA from San Diego? Uh, it takes two hours. Two hours. So I mean, from there, um, I mean, the saturation of of sticking around San Diego, when you can go jump around. Now the Chargers are up there, and you know all those colleges there. It's it's almost like there's too much to choose from. And I mean. Here we have UNR. We, if you want to watch a live college game, you you go to UNR, or you drive your six hours to Vegas and, and go watch UNLV. So, um, you know they they but they don't fill out their stadium either. So, yeah. Well, again, you know, and by the way, the the season ticket holders dropped between yeah. the first year and the second year, and so uh, they need to talk to the econ department at. Um, SDSU and and talk a little bit about it but anyhow yeah a little um, bit more incentive <laughs> yeah you know but like I said we're going to be the pack one it's just because, <laughs> no <laughs> there's yeah. just way too many things to do in San Diego than to sit in the hot stadium watching the game it's true especially when the game when they oh my god I uh, we sit just in front of some season ticket holders that have been season ticket holders for years. And, you know, everybody harks back to the Coriel days when San Diego was a winning team. Yeah. They are terrible. I, their team is literally terrible. Mm. Uh, there was last week, there was over a thousand yards of penalty. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, Come on. And they played a game they were against a team they were supposed to lose to. I mean, win by enormous numbers. It was Idaho. Oh, I, yeah, that's right. I remember seeing that. <laughs> it was like we were all sitting there going, um, either it's the, the players or the coaches. It's the players or the coaches. And so, well. Yeah. And, you know, it. I, I have uh, off and on coached high school football. And Did you? Yeah. Um, it, Sometimes you just throw your arms up. You just, you don't know. I mean, you work all week and and the boys look like they're going to just tranche anyone. And then they get out there on the field and they get smacked in the mouth and they just can't recuperate. They just yeah. they pull your hair out. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, I'll see you at 205. All right. 